It's the Mountain Country Veteran Spotlight, brought to you by the Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group. And in the spotlight today is Major Chuck Wright, who spent 22 years in the Army and is now teaching ROTC at Pueblo Central High School. Thank you for your service. What do you say to someone who says, thank you for your service? I, I'm embarrassed um, and, and humbled because uh, you know, I was a volunteer. And uh, the, uh, the people of the United States allowed me to do everything I ever wanted to do in the United States military. And I, I respect that they want to thank me for my service, but I kind of want to tell them, thank you for being worthy to be served. So, Thank you. And I've asked the others, what does it mean to you to put the uniform on? Um, it, it, to me, it's a representation of all the men and women that have gone 220 years before me uh, that first put the uniform on as volunteers with the Continental Army and then um, throughout uh, World War I, the greatest generation, Korea, Vietnam, the, the, the millions and millions of men and women who have put on the uniform every day, go to work without expectation of reward or recognition and do the job that they were trained to do to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States um, without reservation. You were in the Army for 22 years. What did you do, and did you enjoy it? Um, I, you know, I had a really strange career. It's kind of unusual because I uh, spent my first four years as an enlisted infantryman, but I was assigned to the 3rd United States Infantry, the old guard of the Army, which is the presidential ceremonial unit in Washington, and I actually got to do a couple of years on White House duty with President Reagan. And then in 1982, I went to flight school, uh, warrant officer flight school, and then uh, became a warrant officer because the Army is the only branch that'll let you fly without a college degree, and that's what I wanted to do. So I wasn't interested in going to college. I know I'm at a community college, I shouldn't say that, but I just wasn't mature enough and wasn't ready for it. And so I was able to go to warrant officer flight school and graduated in 82, and then uh, in 1986, I went to OCS and got my commission. Now, you brought along with you some uh, helmets here, so uh, tell us a little bit about these helmets. Well, the first helmet is my helmet that I flew with for uh, my whole 18 years as a pilot. It's an SPH-4. Um, I flew Blackhawks and Kiowas and uh, Kiowa Warriors, and that was the helmet we used. The other one was kind of an unusual one because we went to Great Britain to fly with the Brits, and their intercom system is totally different than ours, so they had to issue us helmets so we could actually plug into their intercom system and talk in the aircraft. So the other one I brought back as a, as a British flight helmet. We flew out of a little airfield called Nether Avon. I don't even know if it's there anymore. And th that was in the, the mid 80s. And the initial approach fix in the stone, into uh, ne uh, Nether Avon was Stonehenge. So we flew over Stonehenge every day. Um, it's just, it, it, it was on the Salisbury Plain, great little place. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a British flight helmet. What do you tell young men and women who are thinking about uh, joining the military? Do you have advice for them? I, I do. First of all, um, don't just pick one service, check them all. Because if you want to be a mechanic, every one of the military services are have mechanics. Uh, if you want to be an M1 tank driver, well, the only place you can do that is the Army. So you're kind of restricted. But open up your options. Look at all your options. Consider what you want to do. Um, look at your career choices and career paths. What, what career path and choice has a good transition out into the civilian sector? How much college credit are you going to get for going through your training? Because Warrant Officer Flight School is worth two years of college. So uh, you got to look at all those situations. And, uh, and then lastly, and I think most importantly, is what's going to make you happy? and doing the job that you want to do. Do you want to get put in a job and be a cook? And if that's going to make you happy, great. Or would you rather be an aviation mechanic and that's what's going to get you an AMP license so you can go out in the civilian sector and work on aircraft in the civilian sector? Um, it's really individual, but really pursue all the options that you have and do what you love. Pick a job that you're going to love to do because you're going to be doing it for six years. Good advice. And speaking of that transition, I know that's uh, a difficult uh, time for a lot of military people. Is that transition tough, or was it for you? Um, no, it wasn't, because one of the things that I, I wanted to do this, I mean, if you look at my high school yearbook, I graduated in 78, I put I wanted to be a military aviator. And so this was a way, and I know I wasn't mature enough to go to college at that time, so I decided to, I'll, I'm going to go warrant officer. And I did get selected my first time, but I got selected my second time. 
And so it, it, it was not a tough transition because I had a long-term goal that I really wanted to fly. I mean, I really wanted to fly. So if I have to go through these steps to get to that, I'll do it. And to put together a warrant officer pack, it takes a year. I mean, it's very voluminous. And to do, have to do it twice, I was just determined that I was going to make that happen. So, Final question. Uh, what are you doing now? And uh, do, do you enjoy it? You're over at the high school. I am. I'm at Central High School. I'm the senior Army instructor for the Wildcat Battalion. Um, and uh, I started off, I was at Fort Riley and retired out of Fort Riley, Kansas. Taught 15 years there at a high school in Kansas, Junction City High School. And then my wife and I moved here in 2015, and I was hired for the job at Central. And I've, I've been doing it for 23 years after I retired, so 45 years total in uniform. So I guess if I've been doing it for 23 years, I guess I like it. And I really do love it. I love the kids. I love their attitude. I love their enthusiasm. Um, you know, we are unlike a lot of high school classes that, in that we don't deal with the disciplinary problems that other teachers have to deal with. Because we tell the kids on day one, look, you're going to conform to our standards and our creed and our motto. And if you can't do that, you can't be part of the team. And, and they buy into that. Uh, and uh, so I, I really do enjoy it. I enjoy teaching with the kids, traveling with them, working with them. We just got back um, last month from, you know, the, the, well, actually the beginning of this month from U.S. Army Raider Nationals and our team that competed brought home a national trophy. Um, and uh, we did a little side trip. We're on our way there. We went to the Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, and I got to take the kids through the Air Force Museum, which is fantastic, and uh, teach them a lot about aviation and the history of aviation. Then we went to Army Nationals at Fort Knox and kicked butt at Fort Knox, and then we uh, climbed on the bus at 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and drove all night. We're back, we're back home at 1 o'clock on Sunday from Kentucky. So, Well, congratulations on a great career, and again, thank you. Thank you, Guy. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. One final question. How can someone get a hold of you if they have a question for you or if they want some advice? Sure. Um, you can reach me. My telephone number at my office is 719-253-6185. Or you can email me. My email is charles.wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, at pueblod60.org. Join us next time for another Mountain Country Veteran Spotlight brought to you by Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group.